Are we on? All right. Hey, this is Zach Scott here with another quick tutorial. Uh, I know it's been a while since my last tutorial, and that's because um, when I do one of these, I want to be sure that I can show you guys something that you might not already know how to do or that somebody else isn't covering. And for the longest time, I haven't really seen, I haven't known anything that you guys didn't already know. But uh, I've recently cracked open particles, so I'm going to try and show you guys how to use particles and how to make particles. So this should be fun. I am going to be just winging this, so bear with me if it takes me a second to think about things. Um, but uh, if you haven't checked out the Valve, uh, the Source Filmmaker official tutorial on particles, uh, you should just pause this video and go check that out first. I'll try and link that in the comments here. I'm going to go over that, um, or some of the stuff in it, uh, as I go through this, but uh, it's good to watch that and get a, f a firm basis of what they're, what they're talking about. Um, because they kind of, they cover a lot of the stuff I'm going to cover. Uh, I'm just going to go into a little more explanation of uh, what things do and how things work. Um, so uh, today we're going to be making a trippy, crazy, just generic LSD trip particle effect. Um, it's a simple, nice, abstract thing to, to kick off with. Um, let me turn off sound here. Because uh, I've got this, I've got this pretty much a uh, neat little video where this medic's uh, shooting up and going into this crazy LSD world. Uh, I'll play a little bit of it. Um, so yeah, so he, like, he shoots up and uh, he starts to trip balls pretty quickly. And uh, you'll see, like, I've got some particles here. I've got, um, like, all these little orange dots coming off of him and uh, these purplish dots coming down from the ceiling. Um, if we look a bit later, I have a whole... Um, crazy setup with a metagun beam that actually shoots out and then comes together into a person uh, which animates it's a uh, it's a bit tricky so uh, it's it's not quite done but um it's pretty cool there's an alex model under there that i'm just applying the particles to to make this kind of energy figure um but i want to get some cool uh, other lsd effects other than particles here um so I'm just kind of kind of make these sprites that kind of swim through the scene. Um, and I'll kind of walk you through that, and it'll be a basic, nice, good tutorial. So uh, the first thing you want to do when you're making a particle is, um, well, you want to make a particle. It's a lot easier to alter uh, the valve ones than it is to create a new one from scratch. I haven't actually completely created a new one from scratch, but I have um, taken a valve tutorial and completely just rebuilt it from scratch. So... Uh, Let's just start by finding the tutorial, the particle we want. Uh, in this case, I know what I want, um, but you should really go ahead and just dig through as many particle files as you can. Um, let me close my Gmail back there. Um, be because basically, uh, the nice thing is that almost any Steam game, uh, even if the models or the maps don't work, almost always the particle files will um, carry over. So. I would highly recommend grabbing Team Fortress, bringing over all the particles, especially grab uh, Dota 2. They have a lot of amazing particles in there um, that work, even if the maps and the characters don't. And that's a free-to-play game, so if you're in the beta, there's uh, some gold to be found in there. But I'm just going to grab the uh, Team Fortress particles, so I'm going to open up my Team Fortress folder. And I'm going to go into Particles, and I know what I want is in Explosions. Uh, so, Explosion... So if you open it, if you open up the particle folder uh, file, and if you didn't um, catch how I got to this menu, sorry, I didn't explain it. Uh, if you go into Source Filmmaker uh, and go to Windows, you can go to Particle Editor Tool, and this will launch the Particle Editor Tool. Um, it's small by default. This is all stuff covered in the Valve tutorial. But we can open this up, and we can browse all the uh, particles within this file. So um, I'm just going to resize this a little bit, or rescale it, or try at least. Uh, this window is kind of weird. I hate this stupid space taking up window um, but we can see everything that's going on in here we got some uh, confetti we got some bubbles we got uh, a bunch of explosion things I'm looking for these uh, flying embers so this shoots out these very fast kind of sparks that come out of the explosion so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these in and I'm just gonna heavily modify that so make sure to remember the name of the particle you want and where it is so this is explosion flying embers inside of particles explosions uh, and I'm going to just put the time up here so I can see how long I'm going. Uh, go back to Source Filmmaker and just create a new particle system. So I'm going to create a new particle system. Yep. So browse, and I'm going to go to Explosions. And I'm going to go to Explosion Flying Embers. And I'm going to make this uh, last for well over the length of my shot, so... Um, 
just so that it never goes away. Uh, this is really helpful uh, setting the start time and emission duration for specific effects like uh, if blood's coming out of a person and it only needs to come out for like a second or so, or if you have an explosion that happens really quickly, um, you're definitely going to want to set the start time. But in this case, I'm using a particle that I just want to turn on and just have on all the time. So I'm going to just give it a pretty much extremely lo a very, very long duration here. So I'm going to create that. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is that I've created my particle, but it doesn't do anything. Um, this is a very annoying bug in uh, Source Filmmaker. I'm going to turn off lighting here. Very annoying bug in Source Filmmaker. I can see that my particle's sitting right here, but when I scrub past its start point, it doesn't do squat. That's because there's a problem with Source Filmmaker. So when you get this, uh, what you got to do to fix this is scrub out of the shot and then scrub back into the shot. And now it should go off, though it's a very quick particle, so we might not see it. There we go. Yeah, it's it's very quick, so you can't really see it. Uh, that's a that's a very annoying bug. Um, there's another bug which happens, which is um, if I were to save this, which I will, just to be safe, and I'll give this a new name just in case something goes horribly wrong. Save as do 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 particle test bad medicine particle. Yep, save. Cool. Always have backups, people. Um, if I were to save this, close Source Filmmaker and reopen it, this particle would not come back. It would still be in the Anim set, but it would never be visible. Um, you could reload the exact particle by creating a new version of the same one, and then that would make it visible for that instance. But again, when you save and close and reopen Source Filmmaker, your particle would be invisible. This makes it a super pain in the ass to work with particles um, if you're not altering them. Uh, but if we alter them, they will be instanced in the file and they will always be loaded and they will always be there when you reopen the file. So this is a very important little trick. Uh, what you want to do is you want to show the particle in the element viewer, uh, just like so. And you want to right click on the top of the uh, tree and go to instance particle system. So this will create a instanced embedded version of this particle, which isn't saved in a particle file, but it's saved within the DMX file itself. Um, and so this will always be loaded, so it will never disappear when you close and reopen the uh, the file. For that reason, I would recommend instancing all of your particles, even if you're not changing them, just so that you don't have to go through the hassle of trying to <coughs> excuse me reload them and and deal with all that bullshit. Um, but we do want to fuck with it, so you also have to do what I just did if you want to alter the instance version of the file and, and create new particles or alter them. Uh, you can do alterations in the particle editor, but it's so much easier to just do what I'm doing here. So, uh, as you can see, it's uh, instancing this particle. has created a bunch of extra shit um, in our particle system definitions. So uh, what we can do here is we can click on this uh, triple ellipsis, and uh, this will launch the particle editor system for this particle. So it's similar to the window we were looking at before. Um, but it's rescalable, which is nice. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm stupid. Yeah, uh, this is all stuff that's covered in the Valve tutorial, so you should be with me, um, so far if you've seen that. Uh, but this is where we start to get into the things that they haven't covered, um, necessarily. So, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to make this infinite. So, um, and I don't want it to just pulse like that. I want it to continuously go. So in your, in your system properties, you have a bunch of different kinds of operators on your particles. You have, um, you have the renderer, which is these trails and the animated sprites. You have the operator, which gives you things that happen over time. Like this will fade and grow bigger. I'll get into these. You have your initializers, which are how it starts and your emitters, which is how it comes out. Um, I'm just going to get rid of these constraints. So I don't want this to be instant. I want this to come out and stay coming out. So I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to replace that with a emit continuously. So emit continuously is awesome. It's great. So now we have emitters shooting out constantly. Um, the emit continuous has a couple of nice little uh, things in here. So maximum emissions per frame, as you'll see here, this option, this changes how quickly particles come out. So I can make it come out 500 at a time. Um, yeah, so 500 at a time. That actually didn't seem to be that bad. Let's make it 1,000 at a time. That's a lot. Don't normally go crazy with particles, but, you know, it's fun to do. Um, so this is making 1,000 come out. It doesn't look like 1,000 is coming out. That's because if you go into the base of the system properties for this particle, this particle will only show 24 particles at a time. So if I bump this up to maybe 1,100, 
you will see that, well, shit, we're not actually getting more after all. Why is that the case? Huh. What are you doing to me, particles? Oh, emission rate. There we go. Ha! Ha! <laughs> there we go. Now we got a fucking sparkler going on. So, uh, we have a bunch of particles. This is probably a little too much. I'm going to go to uh, 250, actually. Um, but I'm going to keep the maximum set of particles high. Uh, so cool, I got some particles, but they're all shooting out in a direction I don't want. I kind of want these to uh, just drift in the air, kind of similar to these uh, pink dots that I have. Um, I'm going to have them move uh, horizontally, so from left to right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this position within spheres. So the thing that's causing these particles to start in the center and then shoot out, I believe, is this position within sphere random. Uh, it's the, it's, uh, I don't know why it does that, but it seems to be the thing that causes explosions. So if you want to make an explosion, that's probably what you want to look for. Um, the best thing to do is to find an explosion already, check out what initializers they're using, and try to reverse engineer it from there. Um, I don't want that, so I'm not going to go into how it works, so I'm just going to remove that. Now we just have a bunch of, bunch of uh, sparks dripping out of one spot. Uh, I'm going to go in here and go to the initializer, and I'm going to add a location initializer so or position rather um so i just want to position randomly within a box position within box random cool awesome so using this i can just generate a kind of field that the particles come out of uh so in this uh initializer i can go down to the well i can stay up here and just start creating a box using uh these max and min variables to define a uh range so Let's see, if I type in 100, 100, uh, 0, for example, I've created a, a flat field. I actually don't want that. I want probably 100, 0, 100. Yeah, there we go. So I've created that. And actually, if I go to uh, minimum, I can make negative uh, 100, maybe 30, negative 100. There we go. Actually, let's just do 0. There we go. So now I've kind of created this field in which the particles are in. That actually looks pretty cool itself. Um, I would, wouldn't be too sad if that was just what I was using. Um, but I'm going to go crazier. So uh, we don't want these to drop down. Uh, we want these to, well, they can still drop down, but I want them to kind of drift off to the side. So I'm going to go into the movement basic, which defines the basic physical properties of your particle. Uh, and as you can see here, by default, this guy had a gravity of negative 500, so it was traveling down at 500. That's uh, the z-axis. And then um, it was moving in... Uh, it was not moving at all in the other direction. So I'm going to turn this down to, like, 30, negative 30. So now they're dropping at a much lighter rate, um, but they're going to be moving at 200 in that axis. So now they're they're dropping and they're passing in that direction. Huh. So that's starting to look like something. These particles are dying off way too fast, though. So I'm going to go into the lifetime random in the initializer, and I'm going to give them a longer maximum lifetime. So right now these go for point th point 0.3 of a second, so I'm going to make it a uh, 3. Yeah, so now we got kind of some neato shit. Let's see, point 0.3. Um, make that point. Well, I'm going to make that six actually yeah okay whoa crazy times um cool so that's neat I'm gonna give these a little less drop negative ten yeah and I'm gonna make a f fewer particles in general because this is a little thick maybe uh, 70 And I'm just changing the emission rate. Uh, actually, I can change the maximum number, too. Maybe put that down to, like, 200. <laughs> okay, cool. So, I have a bu bunch of orange particles flying to the side. Um, I want to change a couple properties of these particles. Uh, so, radius scale here. Right now, these particles start small, or start big, as these big balls, and end small. I don't want that. I want them to start small and end big. So if you go into the radius scale, which remember is an operator, so it's scaling over time, 
as we can see here, we have a couple of things that tell us that. So end time, ease in and out, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we can change what whether it starts big or small. So I'm going to go into uh, the end scale and make these end big at five. And so you'll, automatic, you'll instantly see that these are, are growing instead of shrinking, which is pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to make them start small, so zero. Hmm. These need some fade, I think. Do these have any fade? Fade out time. Cool, I'm going to give them some fade too, so they're not just harshly popping out of existence. So I'm going to go into the alpha fade and decay. Um, interestingly enough, uh, the way that any of these over time effects work is it takes a, a little bit to get your head wrapped around it, but when it says end fade in time is 0.6 and end fade out time is 1, that does not mean that it'll be faded out at one second. It means that it will be faded out when it is completely finished with its lifetime. So this is not a, 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 a number in seconds. This is a number in percentage of the overall lifetime of the particle itself. So um, when it says it's going to fade, it, the end fade in time is uh, 0.6, that means that it doesn't even start fading in until it's at 0.6 in its, or 60% or through its life. So I'm going to make that 0.1. Uh, so it, they kind of start to fade in a little bit earlier. Uh, actually, I'm just going to make that zero. So they're fading in slightly earlier, and the fade out time is going to be... Huh. What the... Oh, oh, sorry, this is a weird one. Um, everything I said is true, except I didn't realize that this guy has end fade in and end fade out at the top, and start fade in and start fade out at the bottom. So it's going to start fading in at zero, and then it's going to finish fading in at point six or point six. Okay. Actually, point, uh, I'm going to make that point two. And then if we go down here again at the bottom, it's going to start fading out at 0.3. So now that should give us some effects. This is getting weird. Uh, I haven't totally mastered some of these things, so I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of, a, of weirdness going on here. Um, I'm just going to ignore that for now. I'm going to go back to the radius scale. And I'm going to make these not quite so big. Two, and I'm going to make them start uh, quite bigger. Cool, so now we have these little fish. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't know why they're popping out. I should fix that. Man, this is going on for a while. Um, let's change these colors. So, as they get older, they turn orange. I want to make that uh, neon blue. There we go. We turn cyan instead. So I'm just changing the color they fade to. Again, uh, the fade end time and the fade start time are here. I'm going to make them turn blue at, at 1. So they shouldn't turn blue until right before they die. You can see the ones that last longer um, do just fine. Lifetime minimum. Maybe if I made that higher, they wouldn't pop out so much. Yeah, I don't know why these guys are popping out. It's really annoying. Um, yeah. I'm going to delete that. Hit remove that. <laughs> now they just go on forever. Nice. Well, that's, um... I should probably have some sort of alpha fade. Alpha fade out simple. Eh, I'll try alpha fade out random. That sounds cool. Hey, awesome! Now they're fading out nicely. Now they're not just, um, not just being dicks. Lifetime three. Do -do -do. 
aim it continuously. Let's turn that max up higher again. <laughs> Just going crazy on this. The, the more you make your particles crazy, the, the more danger you put your computer in. Um, you can get to computer crippling levels of particles pretty easily. Uh, but I think I'll be fine here. So I got these little fish. These don't look like fish though because they're not swimming. So let's give this some force generator force. So I'm going to add a random force to these guys. So a random force is a fun little guy. I like it a lot. So if you drop down uh, to the properties here, it has at the very top some max force and min force functions, which basically just give it a little bit of um, wiggle in either direction uh, the way you want to do it. So I think that's um okay so that's vertical and that's uh i get up 100. so as you see here these guys now ha they have a, a kind of random uh up and down motion to them uh now they got some some neat stuff going on here um i wish i could make this a little crazier uh, two f 300 um and negative be careful with the uh, random force if you go into like negative 3000 uh, you might get into issues where um, it'll look fine in the source filmmaker but when you render your particles might just go freaking nuts uh, so be uh, aware that you can make things way too big sometimes uh, or way too fast rather and then you get results that are not necessarily in line with uh, your render. God, that's cool. It's, uh, how do you think that fits for LSD psychedelics? You got these nice little trails. Cool. I wish I could... I wonder what other fun things I can tweak here. Man, I should probably just do like a particle tutorial live stream. This is going on for a while. I'll try and cut this off soon. Um, I know you guys don't want too much in-depth stuff here. Operator start, fade in, operator offset time max. You know, I'm going to make this uh, one. Hey, nice. Awesome. Now I got a little bit of, uh, of, of variation in these guys. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I got some of these going fast and some of these going slow. Two. Let's see. I'm going to start these with a little more randomized color. Let's get some of these going pink. No. How about... Orange. And let's get the other guys looking kind of... Yeah, okay, cool. That's uh that's starting to look pretty sweet, I think. Um neat. Let's see how that looks in my shot now. So if we come back here, I'm just gonna hit control S and save. And uh if we back up, we should see our guys I think they'll be a little large, because uh, they had a pretty big, I think two hundred range. Two hundred is actually a lot of space in Source Filmmaker. Um so it could be a lot, but yeah, all right, cool. So let's see if I get these, if I turn the lighting on, if I scoot this around in the shot. Yeah, now I got these pretty cool uh, fish swimming around, kind of from one side to the other. I could make them fade out a little uh, longer um, or, or live a little longer so they completely cross the screen, uh, but I think that's good. Uh, let's see how these look with... Um, depth of field turned on. They should look pretty nice. Yeah, well, let's actually get that properly racked up here. But if I frame that, if we get some nice, like, blur on some of these fish. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. So, like, that's pretty much the, the basic setup for a fairly abstract particle. Uh, you can kind of get get some idea of what's going on in the element viewer. I'll maybe do another one of these that's not as um, drawn out. Uh, but, uh, you know, the best thing you can do is jump in here and just start playing around. Um, P 
people tell you that the element viewer is a very dangerous place and this is true it is a very dangerous place uh, but so far the only way that i found to really fuck up like permanently destroy a scene or a, a file rather is if you go into a control point like let's say if i were to go into um go into here go into particle definition system you can do some really fancy stuff in here like i can right click on max particles uh well not that one specifically um uh, I, I love it when I say something and then I try to do it and here we go okay so I can go into lifetime random and I can go and create an animation set for the element and this would give me a lot of amazing power because I can do it and then I can get an animation uh, set of flexes in my animation set and then I can move like for example the lifetime of these particles on a slider like this so I can dynamically change how long they live in the scene for example um, which is extremely powerful and also works except um, if you try and delete that or or change it or or do weird things with that that is the only way so far that i've learned to um completely corrupt a file using the particle editor system so know that you can do that because it's really cool um but be very careful when you are but otherwise i have not uh found any ways to to corrupt my file messing with particles so just jump in there see what you've seen me do um if you want to make an explosion go find an explosion and reverse engineer it if you want to make blood Go find blood and reverse engineer it. Um, just jump right in there. It's crazy stuff, man. Uh, there's some there's some cool tools in here. Um, but yeah, pink fish. All right, I'll see you guys later. I'll probably make another one of these right after this. Uh, I just want to cut this up. Yep. So have fun.